Hey guys, this is uh, Chef Dave Wiener here at Central Stage for Wiener's Way. Uh, today we're doing our celebrity uh, cooking segment. And today we have Steve Caparizzo uh, of News 10 uh, fame. He's a me meteorologist. Um, and he's here and we are gonna be cooking um, some steaks out on the out on the grill. Uh, we, we have kind of some <laughs> weather issues today. We're uh, it's, uh, drizzling a little bit, but we're gonna fight through it today. Um, I'm prepared only, for only, you. Only fitting uh, having Steve here today. So, um, you know, I just, we were talking earlier. I, I, I really, I know sometimes people feel a little intimidated about grilling and cooking steaks and stuff like that, especially because people spend, you know, good money on the steaks. Well, that's what it comes pump. down to, and yeah. that's why I need your help, because uh, I'm almost afraid. Mm -hmm. We have a family get together. You know how there's always somebody in the family they ask to cook on the grill? Guess who they don't ask? You. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Steve, can you just step away or just bring the stuff out to us? I, I tend to overcook everything. That's yeah. always been my problem. I got the grill at a, a medium low, which is a good temp for steaks. Um, you don't want anything too much more because then you're going to get all the flames and it's going to blacken your steak up and you're going to have that charred taste. Now is the key, because I can never do it, is the key to cook it slow, a steak slower? You cook the, I cook the steaks on low, like medium low chicken and stuff, even lower, low and slow on chicken. And then when I do hamburgers, hot dogs, that's a little bit higher because you're basically just, you know, burgers don't take very long. So you're going to help me out because when I cook a steak, uh -huh. I'm going to be honest with you, it comes out like a hockey puck. That's not yes, good. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> I'll show you a couple of tricks on how to make a nice juicy steak every time. Um, and it's usually because people rush it off the grill. You want to take it off the grill and then just let it rest for a couple minutes and it should be juicy every single time. Oh, really? And what I have here is a um, 12 ounce filet mignon. So I'm going to take some of our, um, our house seasoning and I'm just going to put a little bit on top. So we're just going to put this right on the grill. That right looks here. really good already. <laughs> <laughs> I went ahead and pre-roasted some potatoes like three quarters of the way through. So I'm going to put that over here on the lower side and I'm just going to lower that. So Steve, being a pet lover myself, I really wanted to ask you some questions sure. about Pet Connection. Sure. Um, what, um, how did you come about coming up with this, uh, this program? I mean, it's, it's really important to get, you know, people, um, you know, pets getting pets into homes with people who love them and take care of them. Well, well you know, it's a, I, I don't know how it is for most people, but I know for me, it started when I was, you know, a little guy growing up and my mom was, was an animal lover. And, and I tell this story whenever I go out, Dave, and I, and I, and I think it goes to show the passion that some people have. And I, my mom taught me everything. Mm -hmm. And I can remember my mother, I was probably no older than seven or eight years of age, would be sitting at the kitchen table. We had five kids in the family. Uh, my dad worked two jobs, never saw my dad. My mom was at home taking care of all of us. And at the end of the month, I would see her emptying her pocketbook out on the kitchen table. And she'd be counting nickels and dimes and pennies. And she'd be putting me in a pile. And I go, Ma, what are you doing? You know, what? And she goes, well, somebody has to help the homeless animals. Mm -hmm. And even if it was $1 or $2, she would put that in an envelope and mail it away to the shelter. And she says, she always said, Steve, people can speak for people, but the pets can't speak for themselves. And, and, and I think that's, that's where it all started. And that's kind of where my passion is. I grew up with, uh, with cats. And as I got older, I've had a little bit of everything, cats and dogs. <laughs> but it started at a young age, and, and I always said I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew it was weather. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I always told my mother if there was something I could do to give back to the pets that always brought me and our family happiness, I would. And that was kind of the genesis of uh, Pet Connection. And I've been doing it since uh, 1985. That's awesome. It started in Massachusetts when I was there, and when I came in Albany in 1989, uh, that's where it became, became Pet Connection here. That's awesome. I know, I mean, I have two cats I got from a shelter, and I, when I went to pick them up, it just blew my mind at how many people do get pets and then end up giving them up and not, not being able to take care of them and stuff like that. It's great to have programs like that that'll place those pets with people who want them and will take care well, of see, them. Well, see, you know the happiness that they bring you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to put a finger on it, but they don't care who we are. Yeah, exactly. Cats don't judge people. They don't care where you live. They don't care how much money you make. All they want is you to, to, to hold them, to love them, to talk to them. Exactly. And, and Take care of them. Right, and it's unconditional. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think 
you find any unconditional love anywhere else but with a pet. Exactly. They don't judge anybody, and and that's and that's what it all comes down to. You get it, I get it. There are some people that unfortunately will never get it, and they're missing. They are truly missing an awful yeah, lot. Yeah, they life. really are. Well, Dave, uh, as expected, we got the rain coming in on a on a weatherman's barbecue. This is perfect time. Yeah, you want to know something? When I'm at home and it's raining, sometimes I still cook on the grill anyway. So you, <laughs> you know, okay. I have a lot of people, a lot of weather watchers that I have. Uh huh. Um, they barbecue all winter. Yeah, I do too. I do too because it's really it's real close and it's I love grill. So what I do can, so what do we got? How's it going, So man? it's going good. I'm going to open this up, and um, here's a little trick about steaks. You know those perfect little uh, uh, diamond shapes that they have? Oh, yeah. If you just keep it still on the grill and don't fuss around with it, you got those that way. I'm going to twist it about 180, 180 degrees and let that keep going. I'm going to flip my potatoes over here. And then I just want to talk about this burner over here because I know a lot of people get the grills um, and they get the burner with them and then they never use it. So this is a nice little something you can do. So I got a saute pan here. I'm going to just let it get nice and hot for a second and then I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. And what we're going to do is we're going to saute up some spinach with a little bit of roasted garlic and this is going to go on top of our steak. Um, with the roast red pepper pesto. So what do you got to do, put olive oil in there now? Yep, we're going to put a little bit of olive oil. So stand back, I'm going to add my spinach. Now with spinach, spinach cooks down quite a bit, so you're going to probably end up using a little bit more than you think you are. I'm just going to do a little bit of salt and pepper. And this will not take very long at all. This is actually just starting to come together here. Man, it does cook down an awful lot. It really does. You need, I mean, it cooks down probably to, to nothing. I'm gonna add our roasted garlic, which I had roasted earlier in the day. You, no. just ro you just roast these in a little bit of olive oil for about 20 minutes or so, and then That's they get nice and soft. That's good stuff. Man. Yes, I that love roasted garlic. And then I'm just gonna turn that right off. That's ready to go. So let's go over here and ch check on our steak again. I think it's probably ready to be flipped. Now, something that thick, because it's a filet, I mean, is there a set rule on the thickness? I mean, how long you cook it? Well, or are you eyeballing it just to feel? I Well, there's this old cook's trick where you use your, your thumb here, and if you go like that, yeah. you start here. The further you get away from there on that little mound right there, yeah. that's rare, mid-rare, medium, well. Um, I can, at this point, I can just tell kind of by touching the top of it when it's getting close. Um, one of these thick cuts, if you're not really 100% sure, you can always take a knife and slit the bottom and peek inside or get a, a thermometer um, to take a temp on it. You know, it's really starting to pick up here with the rain, so we're just going to um, finish this up and we'll go inside and plate it up and we'll give uh, Steve hopefully a really great meal for tonight. Can I just say something? Absolutely. Um, this was predicted, you know. Yeah. So don't... <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I hope the uh, the steak, the meat, is a lot better than my forecast. I think it will be, huh? I think it will be too. All right, we got to get in before that wind and rain really picks up. All right, Steve. Here we have. Oh my goodness. Uh, Twelve ounce filet mignon with roast red pepper pesto, sautéed spinach, and some herb uh, roasted uh, potatoes. That's unbelievable. Let me just try a little bit here. I can't wait to try that. Uh, what, what kind of pesto is that? This is roasted red pepper pesto. Oh my God, that's to die for, ma'am. Thank you, thank you that so much. That is so, I've never been a big pesto guy. Yeah. But this is different. Yeah, this is a roasted red pepper pesto. Basil pesto, which is different, has a different flavor, but like I said earlier, I really like making different types of pesto. And um, this is a meal that can be done all on the grill. Um, you know, you can do it all on the grill. The potatoes you can cook ahead of time, a day ahead of time even. I'm like so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate Chef that. Chef Dave, thank you very much. I learned a lot today and I'm going home tonight well fed because of you. I thank Absolutely. you very much. Thank you. That's what we try to do here. Awesome Hopefully meal. Hopefully nobody leaves here hungry. <laughs> Not if they get this. This, yep. is, this is out of this world. Yeah, I'm actually, um, actually going to run this as a special coming up this weekend so everybody else can come in and uh, experience the the uh, same meal that Steve is having here. Dave, one more thing. Great meal. And I want to thank Central Steak and White Management for their support of Pet Connection. You guys oh, have been at a lot of our events, so you've catered them. Um, it's always amazing to see the expression on people's faces when you have a catered mm -hmm. Pet Connection event. Well, and you know, it's great always food. 
It's always our pleasure. We love uh, supporting um, you guys, and um, you know, I just want to say thank you for coming in. We, I had a really good time, a good, fun time cooking with you. So, Dave, my man, thank you, and uh, the pets thank all of you at Absolutely. Central Steak, and uh, and my stomach thanks you as well. Well, I'm gonna let you finish eating because I know you're dying to get into that. Oh, so. you're not kidding. <laughs> thanks, Dave. Yeah. No